video will discuss most popular electronic components. We'll cover components like resistor, capacitor, inductor, switch, diode, LED, transistor, relay, transformer, and IC or integrated circuit. Let's begin our journey into electronics with one of the most common and essential components, the resistor. A resistor is a passive two-terminal electrical component that opposes the flow of electric current. When current passes through it, the resistor creates a voltage drop that is directly proportional to the current according to Ohm's law, which simply states that voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. In simple terms, a resistor controls how much current flows through a circuit. It's like adding friction to the flow of electricity. The symbol of a resistor is represented by a zigzag line connected at both ends with straight terminals. In some modern diagrams, especially in European standards, it is drawn as a rectangular box, but both mean exactly the same thing. Resistors are denoted by the letter R, followed by a number like R1, R2 or R3. The unit of resistance is the ohm, represented by the Greek letter omega. In practice, resistors come in various ranges, from just a few ohms to hundreds of kilohms or even mega ohms, depending on the required current control. Now, what are the main uses of a resistor? They are used for current limiting, voltage division, biasing transistors, signal control, and stabilizing circuits. In fact, it's almost impossible to find an electronic device that doesn't include at least one resistor. Resistors come in several types. The most common is the fixed resistor, which has a constant resistance value. Then comes the variable resistor, such as the potentiometer or rheostat, which allows manual adjustment. Finally, we have special types like the LDR, light-dependent resistor, which changes resistance based on light, and the thermistor, which varies with temperature. So, even though a resistor might look simple, it's one of the most powerful components in electronics, quietly ensuring that every circuit runs smoothly, safely, and efficiently. Let's move on to the next important component in electronics, the capacitor. A capacitor is a passive component. It has two terminals, and it stores electrical energy in an electric field. When the circuit needs energy, the capacitor releases it. It works by holding opposite charges on two plates. These plates are separated by a thin insulating layer called a dielectric. Think of it like a tiny energy tank. It charges and discharges when needed. The symbol of a capacitor shows two parallel lines. They represent the plates with a small gap between them. If one plate is curved, it means the capacitor is polarized, like an electrolytic capacitor. Capacitors are marked with the letter C, for example, C1, C2, etc. The unit of capacitance is the farad, named after Michael Faraday. In real circuits, capacitors are very small, measured in microfarads, nanofarads, or picofarads. Capacitors are everywhere. They store energy, filter signals, and block unwanted noise. They are also used for coupling and decoupling signals, for timing, and for stabilizing voltages. In a power supply, a capacitor smooths the output after rectification. In audio circuits, it blocks DC and lets AC signals pass through. There are different types of capacitors. Fixed types include ceramic, electrolytic, and film capacitors. Variable types include trimmer and tuning capacitors, used in radio circuits. So even though it looks simple, the capacitor is one of the most useful components in electronics. It keeps your circuits stable, clean, and ready to perform. Let's move on to another key component in electronics, the inductor. An inductor is a passive, two-terminal electrical component. It stores energy in the form of a magnetic field when electric current flows through it. Unlike a capacitor, which stores energy in an electric field, the inductor works with magnetism. When current starts flowing through the inductor, a magnetic field builds around its coil. And when the current tries to change, the inductor resists that change. This property is known as inductance, the ability to oppose sudden changes in current. That's why inductors are very useful in circuits that deal with alternating current or fluctuating signals. The symbol of an inductor looks like a coiled wire, representing the turns of the winding. Inductors are labeled with the letter L, followed by a number, like L1, L2, etc. The unit of inductance is the Henry, named after the scientist, Joseph Henry. In practical circuits, inductors are usually measured in millihenry or microhenry because one full henry is quite large. 
Now what does an inductor actually do? It's used for energy storage, filtering, and tuning circuits. You'll find inductors in power supplies, signal processing circuits, and radio frequency applications. In a power supply, for example, the inductor helps smooth the current and reduce noise. In radio circuits, inductors work with capacitors to form tuned circuits that select specific frequencies. Inductors come in several types. The most basic one is the air core inductor, which has no magnetic material, used mostly in high frequency applications. Then there's the iron core inductor, which provides higher inductance and is used in low frequency circuits. The ferrite core inductor is very common in switching power supplies because it handles high frequencies efficiently. And finally, the toroidal inductor has a ring-shaped core that reduces electromagnetic interference. So in simple terms, the inductor is like the memory of a circuit. It stores magnetic energy and resists changes in current, keeping signals smooth and stable. Whether it's in power electronics, filters, or communication systems, the inductor quietly ensures everything runs efficiently. Now let's talk about one of the simplest yet most essential components in any electrical circuit, the switch. A switch is an electrical component used to make or break the flow of current in a circuit. It allows us to control the connection between the power source and the load. In simple terms, when you turn a switch on, it completes the circuit and lets current flow. When you turn it off, it opens the circuit and stops the flow of electricity. The symbol of a switch is shown as a small break in a line, often with a movable contact that opens or closes the path. It's one of the easiest symbols to recognize in a circuit diagram. Switches are usually denoted by the letter S or sometimes by SW, followed by a number like S1 or SW1. They don't have a unit because a switch can only be in two states, on or off. The main purpose of a switch is to control the circuit. It can turn a device on or off, select between two different paths, or even automate the process. You'll find switches everywhere, from simple light switches in homes to complex control panels and machines. There are many types of switches, and each has a specific role. The most common type is the SPST, or Single Pole Single Throw Switch. It's the simplest one. It just connects or disconnects a single circuit. Next is the SPDT, or Single Pole Double Throw, which can connect one input to two different outputs. Then comes DPST, or Double Pole Single Throw, which controls two separate circuits at once. And finally, DPDT, or Double Pole Double Throw, which can route two circuits in two directions. Apart from these, we also have push-button switches, toggle switches, slide switches, and rotary switches. Push buttons are common in calculators, keyboards, and control panels. Toggle switches are used in instruments and vehicles. Slide switches are often found in small gadgets. And rotary switches are used where multiple positions or functions are needed, like in old radios or mode selectors. So while a switch might seem simple, it's actually one of the most powerful control elements in electronics. From turning on a light bulb to switching complex industrial circuits, every electronic system relies on switches to start, stop and control the flow of electricity. Now let's talk about semiconductor devices in electronics, starting with the diode. A diode is a two-terminal semiconductor device that allows current to flow in only one direction and blocks it in the opposite direction. It acts like a one-way valve for electric current. This simple behavior makes it extremely useful for converting, protecting and controlling electrical signals. When voltage is applied in the forward direction, the diode conducts electricity. But when the voltage is reversed, it blocks the flow completely. This property is what makes it ideal for rectification, converting alternating current or AC into direct current or DC. The symbol of a diode is shown as a triangle pointing toward a line. The triangle represents the direction of conventional current flow and the line represents the blocking side called the cathode. The other end is called the anode. Diodes are labeled with the letter D, followed by a number, such as D1, D2, etc. There's no specific unit for a diode, but its behavior is defined by its forward voltage drop. For a silicon diode, this is about 0.7 volts, and for a germanium diode, it's around 0.3 volts. Diodes are used in many ways. They are used for rectification in power supplies, polarity protection in circuits, signal demodulation in communication systems, voltage regulation and high-speed switching. In almost every electronic circuit, you'll find at least one diode doing one of these jobs quietly in the background. There are several different types of diodes, each designed for a specific purpose. 
The most common one is the PN junction diode, which performs the basic one-way conduction. Then there's the Zener diode, which is used for voltage regulation and works in reverse breakdown mode. The short key diode has a lower voltage drop and is often used for fast switching. The LED, or light emitting diode, produces light when current passes through it. The photodiode does the opposite, it converts light into current. And finally, the varactor diode changes its capacitance with applied voltage, which is useful in tuning and radio circuits. So while the diode may look small, it plays a huge role in modern electronics. From power supplies and chargers to radios and communication systems, the diode is the silent gatekeeper that controls the flow of electricity in just one direction. Next, the most fascinating and widely used type of diode, which is used in modern electronics and displays, is the LED or light emitting diode. An LED is a semiconductor device that emits light when current flows through it in the forward direction. It works by converting electrical energy into light energy. In simple terms, when electricity passes through an LED, it produces light instead of heat like a regular bulb. That's why LEDs are so efficient and long-lasting. The symbol of an LED is very similar to a normal diode symbol, a triangle pointing toward a line, but it also has two small arrows pointing outward. These arrows represent light being emitted from the device. LEDs are usually denoted as LED or sometimes just the letter D followed by a number, for example, LED1 or D1. There is no specific unit for an LED, but its brightness is often measured in lumens or in candela, which represent how much light it gives out. Now let's talk about uses. LEDs are everywhere. They are used as indicators in electronic circuits, showing power status or signal activity. They are also used in displays, backlights, and lighting systems. In fact, from the small power indicator on your phone charger to the massive LED screens in stadiums, they all rely on this simple yet powerful component. LEDs come in many types. The standard LED is the small one you often see on circuit boards. The SMD LED or surface mount LED is compact and used in modern lighting panels. High power LEDs are used for illumination like in headlights or flashlights. RGB LEDs can emit red, green and blue colors and by mixing these, they can produce millions of shades. And finally, infrared LEDs emit invisible light and are commonly used in remote controls, sensors and night vision devices. One of the biggest advantages of LEDs is their efficiency. They consume very little power, produce almost no heat, and can last for tens of thousands of hours. This makes them perfect for both low-power electronics and large-scale lighting systems. So the LED is not just another diode. It's a revolutionary component that lights up our world, literally and figuratively, powering everything from your digital screens to city street lights. Now let's talk about one of the most powerful inventions in electronics, the transistor. A transistor is a semiconductor device and it is used to amplify or switch electrical signals and power. It works by controlling the flow of current between two terminals using the third terminal. In simple words, it can make weak signals stronger or act like an electronic switch. The symbol of a transistor depends on its type. For a BJT or bipolar junction transistor, the symbol shows three terminals, the base, collector and emitter. For a FET or field effect transistor, the terminals are called gate, drain and source. In a circuit diagram, these symbols help identify how the transistor is connected and used. Transistors are labeled with the letter Q or sometimes T. For example, Q1 or T1. There's no specific unit for a transistor. Its performance is described by things like current gain, often called beta, and by its voltage and current ratings. So what are transistors used for? They are used for amplification, switching, and signal modulation. They are also the basic building blocks of digital logic circuits. In an amplifier, a transistor takes a small input signal and makes it stronger. In digital electronics, it acts like an on-off switch, forming the logic behind microchips and processors. There are different types of transistors. The most common type is the BJT. It comes in two forms, NPN and PNP. Then there's the FET, which includes JFET and MOSFET types. MOSFETs are widely 